Well, hello everybody. Welcome back from the cliffhanger. So, here we are. The phone rings. We're about to answer it. I wonder what's gonna happen. I don't know. Well, I'm well prepared. Guys, hold my hand. <laughs> We're picking up the phone. The phone rings. I grab the receiver and slowly pick it up. I hear a noise like someone chewing gum from the other end of the phone. An icy cold voice speaks. <laughs> Did you see it? Uh. Uh. Uh, uh, hold on. <laughs> uh, something tells me don't go with I, so... Uh, uh, I want to say no, but... Sorry, I'm hesitating a little bit. But... <laughs> Maybe I should try to do... Uh... I don't know what's gonna happen. You saw it? Didn't you? You saw that thing of me? The voice cuts off. Oh god. <gasps> Why is there a handprint? Something outside collides violently with the glass of the booth, but I can't see it. Live or die. Make your choice. <laughs> Tell me. How did you see it? With your own eyes? Are eyeglasses? A telescope? Uh... Telescope. I can't say the eye. Sounds like something's searching around outside the fall box. You saw it? You said you saw it? What color? A beautiful color? Red? Pink? Green? Uh... Maybe pink? <laughs> I think I'm doing good. You saw it? What kind of person are you? What's important to you? Your dreams? Romance? Love? Which? Which do you choose? Uh, romance is great. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh god. I save. Oh, I survived. Oh my god. <laughs> the phone goes dead. The next thing I know, the bloody handprint is gone, and so is the ominous presence. The question it she asked me were strange. She was particularly anxious about what I had seen. I think I did a good job not mentioning anything like eyes in my answers. 
overly conscious of her being seen. Maybe that's where her secret lies. Christy? Christy? <gasps> Christy! Oh my god, darling, you're here. I exit the booth, and Christy rushes up to me. My mark started hurting out of nowhere. Did you... Did it go all right? I tell Christy about what happened in the telephone booth. I have no idea what that means. Guess there's no way she'd know the answer. Huh. Something's on the ground here. Sure enough, there's a folded up piece of paper lying near the booth. Looks like a piece of stationery. I don't think it was there before I went into the phone box. I pick up the paper and open it. To Seiko, I'll dispel all of your heartache. So forget that horrible incident and take your quiet rest up in heaven. An incident? The posters I saw in the telephone booths mentioned something like that, too. Could they be connected? I ask Christy what they think. Christy looks deep in thought. What is it? Oh, now then. Well, we've checked out all the boxes, so let's head back to the mansion. Something still bugs me, though. Yeah? We should probably head back for now. New info added to the spirit file. The third phone box. Alright, we're doing good at this so far. Yes, let's return to the mansion. Ooh, I can't believe I got all this safe. I was heart racing on that. Hey, Mr. Contella! You know those posters and that bit of stationery we found? Could they be linked to Hanayome? She might have been someone who was caught up in the incident and killed. And if that's the case, then... Christy turns towards the shelves and files. Files full of articles on criminal cases. The dates were five years ago, right? But there might be an article on what happened here is in these files. We could use more help. Maybe Ada and Suzu can't give us a hand. Go ahead and call them over. All four of us begin reading through the files, and clippings range from the smallest dispute to the most heinous crime in each city. But they're all dated five years ago or earlier. Did they get stored in the gar garage because they're so old? After a while... I found it! The victim's name is Seiko. The date is, is February 8th, five years ago. Gotta be it! Christy lays the file out on the desk and we all peer at it. The file has articles and incident that happened five years ago. The victim's name was Seiko Hasegawa. Apparently she be became a suicide victim in the forest by each castle on the eve of her wedding. She was in her dress when she was found. Oh, Suzu, you shouldn't read this anymore. It's pretty bad. Oh, it's Ada. God damn it. <laughs> Maybe I should reread re re that. Uh, hang on. Uh, Suzu, you probably shouldn't read anymore. It's pretty bad. Thanks, Ada. Okay. But... 
I want to know more about Hanayome. I feel like I need to know this. She's cringing, but she sounds determined. Between this and sneaking out at night, she's a surprisingly brave kid. It's rather odd for someone her age. I remember now. This happened back when I used to be a Oh wait, that's Chris. I remember now. This happened back when I used to be a news anchor. Christine mutters just loud enough to hear. Then, do you know the whole story? It was horrible. It's hard to recount. I, a woman was abducted by a gang while she was walking her dog. They brought her to the forest and assaulted her. People found her battered and staggering along the road the next day. The dog was run over and killed near the forest when it, when it chased after them. That's horrible. That's horrible. Yeah, but that wasn't the end of Seiko Hasegawa's misfortune. Ada somberly cuts in. His usual grin is nowhere to be found. It's well known in some circles, but her assault was photographed. Uh, maybe it was Christie's? Uh, this is Christie's uh, dialogue? I really need that names above their <laughs> dialogues. Uh, the pictures were sent to her fiance. They threatened to make them public if he didn't pay up. I heard he gave them a ton of money to get the photos and the negatives. Is that true, Christy? Yeah, I heard it Uh, yeah, I heard it that as well. Because of all that, Miss Seiko had a mental breakdown, and in the end, she hung herself. She been a serious, honest woman, so she just couldn't bear it? The cruel fate of a woman attacked before her wedding. We fall silent as that reality weighs on us. Oh, darling, I know. Oh. I know it's too hard to bear for a child to hear about a sudden ill case about a tragedy on a woman, a bride-to-be, being ganged up by a bunch of gangs. Uh. Uh. That's very emotional for me to know as well. I apologize, guys. Um... Suzu timidly speaks up, her face pale. Maybe there's a connection between what happened to Miss Hasegawa and Hanayomi's phone boxes? According to the article, the incidents that were... wrecked her life took place near each phone box. She was abducted by the park and assaulted by the rest area. She was found wandering near the park lot, parking lot to buy a, a highway. The phone booths connect Hanayome and Sega Hasegawa. The coincidence sends a shiver down my spine. So that note we found by the telephone booth, did Seiko's fiance write it? I suppose most likely possible. What's strange is it was there, and not where she committed suicide. 
Did Hanayome put it there? Maybe she was telling us something. I have no clue how spirits think, but if Suzu's right, then that note is an important clue for us. I seem to recall his psycho's fiance was a famous musician. As a result, the case was widely publicized at the time. It happened right after they re returned from a romantic trip to Greece. Old ladies were sobbing about how it made it all the more tragic. The poor dog they brought on the trip died heroically as well. Where's the fiancé now? Well, he began acting strange due to this shock when... Uh, shock and then went missing. Some say her suicide was to follow him. Oh no! Oh no. Maybe that was the man that I think it was? Oh no. It was all connected. What we saw in the forest. Oh god. Oh no. Jeez. Oh my. I'm sorry if I'm. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so deeply emotional. This. This got my mind all mind blown. That man. That poor man. That Sh Shimio killed. Was the fiance? He was trying to commit suicide after the death of his recent. Uh, I don't know if, if that was a guy. I can't even bear to think. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I I know I want to continue, but this is deeply hit. Uh, hang on, let me take a sip of water and continue. I'm so deeply hit with this story. But he wasn't the only one who disappeared. It sounds like all of the culprits went missing too. Did you say all the culprits? All the culprits? You hear about that online too? Well, something like that. The internet wasn't the same back. Then there was only hubs. Hubs? Like pre-internet chat rooms? Everyone was talking about it on the occult hubs. Back then, there was one person in the community who knew way too much. I think he was the one of the culprits. He brought up a bunch of the things, like taking pictures and all of that. And I bet those were the pictures of the assault. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. After they were finished, those assholes got a camera out. I took pictures of her and her face soaked with tears. The whole time she yelled, Don't look, don't look. Don't, don't look. Huh. Hanayome was an extreme reaction to being seen by others. He kept going on about it night after night until he would suddenly stop posting. People who knew him said they couldn't contact him at all. Those guys deserve to die. But it's really creepy, you know. 
Suddenly a line from the note pops into my head. I'll dispel all your heartache. Hey, Christy. Do you happen to know exactly where in the forest Seiko killed herself? I was a reporter at the time, so I did go to the location. But that was five years ago, so I don't remember exactly. I feel like I went west from that big arc at the entrance. So you're really going to go? Yeah, you might be able to figure out something about Hanayomi. Fine, I understand. I've had my fill of that forest, but I suppose we have no other leads. Alright. Oh man, my heart is beating fast. Uh, geez, I don't even know what to say about this. This is so deep of a plot. Mm, let me go to the Kuja Mansion and let's see. Go with the gutsy girl for this quest. <laughs> that was a cute sound. And let's talk to Mary. I tell Mary about Seiko Hasegawa. What a sad woman. Her grudge against the world turned her into a Hanayome. If this is indeed the case, you may find a clue in the forest. Where she committed suicide. This is a very- I think this is gonna make me tear jerk. And mind blown of what's gonna happen. This is very emotional. Okay, let's exit and go to the forest. Oh god. Hmm. I really like to know what kind of <laughs> dialogues these people got, but um, I'm not quite sure what to choose for the partner. Hearing her speak, I had the impression that she had been raised well, but now that I'm out alone with her like this, it's not just that. She's how do I put it? This is a little late, but I hope we get along. Um, should I call you Mr. Cartella? No. Just, uh, mister is fine. Having you call me by my first name is kinda... I'm sorry. That was rude of me. That's right. She's strangely mature. Uh, Suzu. Is it alright if I call you that? Yes. Just Suzu is fine. Okay. Uh, so what do you... do your parents do? Yeah, it's kind of out of the blue to ask that, but... we might be in some life-and-death situations, even if she's just a kid. I'd like to know what kind of person she is. Right now, I'm only living with my mom. She pushes herself every day. Pushes herself? Does that mean she's a career woman who works hard at her job? 
I see. Sorry for the random question. Not at all. She lives alone with her mother, who works every day. Which means she's basically living alone, single mother. That must be why she's so mature. Just then, the tires hit a bump in the road. I can see a square gray object in the back seat through the rear view mirror. Huh, is that thing back there yours? No, that's Ada's. He said it was a CD radio cassette player. A radio cassette player? Why? He said we might need music while we drive. Want to listen to something? No, I'll pass. The conversation grinds to a halt after that. It's like there's an invisible person between us. After falling silent, a while Suzu finally speaks up again. It only makes sense for the conversation to turn one direction. Um, this mark. Did Hana Yome really do this? I don't know for sure, but I think that's a natural assumption. Oh, I guess so. Suddenly it dawns on me. Why does this kind of... Why does this kid not want to treat the spirit like it's evil? No, maybe it's just Hanayome specifically. But that would be the best. What would... I mean, if Hanayome were really a nice spirit... Yeah, you're right. Her, she grins at me as relief. I smile back at her stiffly, awaited in the pit of my stomach. If that's really true, when we can get through this without anyone dying. The problem is, that's impossible. I lightly rub my wrist as I watch Suzu smile out of the corner of my eye. Yeah, I... I really hope so. Alright, I think I, this is where I'll end this, so bless it be, show some support. I love you guys! Bye! And good night! We'll continue on with this little girl's information and directions if she can give me anything through this forest. So, blessed be and good night.